The weather outside is frightful. And the, oh, yo, side note though, for real, it's starting to clear up now. But these, uh, these dust storms, look at the sky, dude, it's orange. These dust storms are sick. I don't know if there's ever dust storms in Washington, D.C., but uh, in this game, they're pretty sick. Oh, look, and now it's cleared up. Look at that. Oh, that was cool. That was like the end of the uh, dust storm. That was pretty cool. All right, anyways, let's uh, let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? Let's uh, go over here and get the damn thing going. All right. Second build video of the day. You guys hyped? I am. Here we go. What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in today's build video, I am bringing back the Lady Death. That's right, the Lady Death returns. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe if you're new. We're about to hit 42,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for the support. And let's keep that ball rolling to 50K. And let me uh, hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I know a lot of people, you know, put down the lady death in year two after the whole adrenaline rush intimidate meta. But all that is gone. There's no more adrenaline rush intimidate meta. And uh, you can use the Lady Death freely without uh, being judged. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First up, we're going to do some gameplay. And then we'll come back and I'll explain the build in a build breakdown. But with all that said and done, let's jump over to the gameplay. Now this is on Xbox. So if you're on Xbox, you can add me. And you can actually see all of these clips before I even put them out on video. Now these are all going to be new clips. You can see they're all within the last hour. And it's me testing out this build. It's a lot of fun. Let's see. Now, don't mind my secondary weapon. I'm only putting on those secondary weapons for uh, proficiency reasons. I was just trying to level them up. I was trying to uh, revive that guy, and then he just left countdown. It was pretty nuts. But uh, we still have some other hunters and buffs to get to. So I figured it'd be a good idea to uh, run over there and get the buffs. Now, I am going to later do a countdown mechanics video. So, if you are confused with countdown or you're not sure where to go or what to do, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to make a countdown mechanics made simple type of video. But if you guys saw, I have four riot foam charges. Four. The other build I did with the Scorpio, I had two. Now I have four Riot Foam Charges. Um, my buddy West Ozzy was talking to me. He, uh, he was saying how he would use his build to get more Riot Foam Charges just because, you know, it was nice to Riot Foam the enemy. And I completely agree. Having four charges is really fun. Uh, I don't remember him recalling how many he had on his build, but uh, for every tier that you go up, you get another plus one ammo. So I'm actually tier two for my Riot Foam, and that's how I get those, you know, those extra ammo charges. But this is us doing all these hunters, doing some good damage. I'm not really having any stacks of the Memento right now, and I'm hitting roughly about five to 600K. Now with stacks up, you're hitting more like eh, 1.1 million. But it's hard uh, with these guys so close together getting those uh, stacks up and, you know, beating everyone to that kill. Because using uh, Memento and Countdown, you're fighting for that kill. But, you know, as long as you can get it first, you get those stacks and you are good to go. Now let's look at the next video. Do -do -boo -ba -do. I have quite a few of these. Now this is going to be actually inside the mission. And this, this video is actually pretty funny. So I want you guys to watch it how much damage is negated with this build. Now you can see my armor bar. It's not that thick, right? I, I don't have a lot of armor on this build. But they can't really hurt me. Like, just look at this. So I don't even fight them. And all look at all these enemies coming up the stairs. Look at that. And I'm, I'm not even fighting them at all. 
and they're all shooting me. You see this? Pretty funny. And then boom. And you can see right there I'm hitting for just under 1.1 million. And I'm just under max stacks with the memento. But uh, I thought that was pretty funny. They're just shooting me. Nothing's really happening. I, I have pretty low armor, but I'm still able to uh, hold my own. The survivability of this build is pretty damn high. I love it. It's pretty damn nice. All right, so I think that was the end of clip three. Yep, it sure was. Okay. Let's go over to the next clip. And again, you guys can watch all of these on, uh, on Xbox before I do any of these. Okay, so the next clip, we have three more. Oh, yeah, more hunters. So what I did is I went ahead and recorded me doing two full runs with this build with random people and just to see, you know, how it fared because I figured if I ran this with a full DoD crew, obviously it'd be a little biased because then I'd have people on my clan doing buffs and support builds and healer builds and whatever, helping each other out because of team synergy where in a random matchmate group, you don't have that. You don't have that, you know, organic synergy. You you have whatever people are running around with. But you can see I'm running through all of these enemies with no armor and I'm not dying. You can see that uh, I'm having explosions pop off. I'm getting shot left and right, but I'm not dying. I'm not losing all of my armor. And that's really good when you're going against all of these elites. Oh, my entire team went down. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. Oh, and then I go down. Um, the hunters right here, they hacked all of the skills, and it took out my entire team. So then when I turned around to help them, uh, all of their hacked skills started shooting me, and then I'm dead. And then that was the end of that game. So then I did one more countdown game with another squad, and here are the two last clips, and then we'll get into the build breakdown. Now, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up, support the channel by subscribing, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But this one, again, Hunters. This thing melts Hunters, tr truly does. And you can see I'm just blindly just running straight at them, just head on, let's go, no fear. Just let's take care of the Hunters. And then roughly two magazines, and you're good to go. Boom. And he's dead. And then on to the next one. I get three hunter kills in this video. That's pretty sick. Oh! Now, the weird part right there is my Unbreakable didn't proc. And it doesn't show it on a cooldown. So I think that was kind of like a bug. Because my Unbreakable should have proc there. And it didn't. I was kind of, like, worried. I was like, oh, man. He's, he's going to kill me. But he doesn't, obviously. And then, uh, yeah, on to the last clip. And then we are done. Just showing you how good this build reacts and everything in a natural setting. And this is going to be some more hunters. This one is uh, actually towards... Oh, this, this is an epic hunter fight. So watch this hunter fight. This is epic, dude. Because we're basically 1v1-ing this whole time. Oh, and then you have that one guy way in the background. But you'll see what I mean. Because we almost kill him, right? And then what does this hunter do? He dips. He's gone. And then guess what? Yep, he healed. Oh, my unbreakable proc that time. So that's good. And then the hunter keeps running. He's, he's just steadily running away. Oh, I missed that foam. I'm still practicing my foam. I haven't used foam in a long time. Oh, almost got him there, though. It's because I didn't have any Lady Death procs. There it is. Die, die, die. Boom. And that was an epic. And then, look, my whole team's dead, dude. <laughs> but that was worth it. That was a fun hunter battle. But all right. So that is it for the gameplay. Welcome back. Let's get into the build breakdown. And here we go. Here is the Lady Death Returns build. Now, starting off with the specialization, I am using the Firewall special, or not the Firewall, 
<laughs> the technician specialization. Now, the reason I'm using the technician specialization is it gives me one plus skill tier. Now, like I said earlier, I have four ammo in my riot foam. That's huge. So you can see right here on the right side of your screen, it says tier two, you get plus two ammo. So that's how I go from two to four. And having that four ammo for the uh, foam launcher is amazing for those hunters. You can just foam them time after time after time and just face tank and you're good to go. Over. Now... Onto the weapons. Now the secondary and the sidearm are interchangeable. You can put whatever it is you want on there. I switch them out just so I can um, level them up and become proficient in more weapons. But it's all about the Lady Death. I'm just running and gunning with this Lady Death. Now this Lady Death is God rolled. So max SMG damage, um, armor damage, and crit chance. Now it is expertise level 13. So I do get that plus 13% uh, weapon damage. Uh, this thing is amazing. I think that whatever nerf or anything they did has been alleviated. This thing smacks. It's at 98.5k total damage with 1.1 million armor. It's just, it's ridiculous. Ridiculously strong. As long as you have stacks, that is. Because remember, after what, about a mag and a half, you're already out of those Lady Death stacks. So then you have to run around, get those stacks back up so you can enjoy that amplified damage. Now, if you don't know what I mean, it's all about this talent right here, Breathe Free. So when moving, you gain four stacks per second. However, if you are running, you get eight stacks per second, total of 32. Now, each of those stacks contain 75% amplified damage. Now, if you get a kill, it ups your movement speed by 20%. And that is huge. A lot of people use this weapon for speed runs and, uh, and league events and what have you. And it's because as soon as you get that kill, you get that movement speed. And it really does help you out. Uh, it's an amazing weapon. I'm glad to be using it again. And then just to fast forward, I'll show you really quick. For the Lady Death, I'm at 57 chance, 110 crit damage. Okay, now let's do a deep dive into the build. I have 1.1 million armor, and that's because I have a blue core attribute on my mask and my backpack. But remember, my backpack gives me three different core attributes. Now, starting off with the mask. This is the Chill Out Mask. This is the named Heligard Mask with that extra mod slot. Now, I'm using this for the protection from elites. Now, go back to the stats. You can look right here under Defensive Stats. I am at max protection from elites. I'm at 80% protection from elites. That is how all of those elites were shooting me and they weren't really doing any damage. That's how at the extraction I was taking on hunters while elites were shooting me, while other hunters were shooting me, and still it goes right past because of all the protection from elites. Now that moment that I died during that extraction, I wanted to point out it was due to the hacked skills because those hacked skills are not classified as elite damage. They are classified as normal damage. So that'll burn right through you and melt your armor instantly. So just remember that if the hunters hack your skills, your protection from elites goes out the window. Okay, now back to the chill out mask. The named Heligard mask, however, during this update, the mask is bugged. I should have 1.2 million armor. However, the brand set bonuses with this mask have disappeared. They're not there. Um, normally, you would see the Heligard brand set bonuses. However, they're not here. They're, they're gone for some reason. Now on to the attributes, it does have max armor for the core, max crit damage for the normal, and then two protection from elite mods. Going to the backpack, this is the Memento backpack. This thing is amazing. Now you saw that even with my 1.1 million armor and I'm running unbreakable, with max Memento stacks, I can hit 1.1 million per bullet with my Lady Death. Now, the Memento does carry three core attributes, so I get a red, a blue, and a yellow, 
And then I do have a protection from elites mod on here as well. But it's all about the talent kill confirmed. So you get short term and long term buffs after you kill an enemy and collect a trophy. The short term buffs are based off of your core attributes. For example, with this build, every time I pick up a trophy, I'll get 25% weapon damage, 20% bonus armor, and 5% skill efficiency. However, you get the long term buffs, and that's where it's magic. You can get up to 30 stacks. And when you do so, you have 30% weapon damage, 30% skill efficiency, and 3% armor regen for 5 minutes. And that's if you don't get a kill within the 5 minutes. So if you get a kill within those 5 minutes, it'll reset. You'll have max stacks for another 5 minutes. All right, now these three pieces right here, I'm sure are confusing a lot of you. You're like, yo, Kami, there's no brand set on there. There's no logo on there. What, what the hell is going on here, brother? They are all improvised. So these are old improvised items that I crafted back in like year one. Um, they're pretty sick. Well, I mean, I guess technically year two because level 40 didn't come out until Warlords. So since year two, now, to get these improvised items, you come over here to the crafting station, and you can craft them yourself. So, holster, knee pads, gloves. All you have to do is scroll down to other, and it's right here, improvised holster. Now, what it does is it gives you two normal attributes, but instead of giving you a brand set bonus, it gives you a mod slot. Go over to knee pads, scroll down to other, and again, right here, improvised knee pads. It'll give you the uh, two attributes and then a mod slot. And then for the gloves, again, scroll down to other improvised gloves, craft those. You will get two random attributes and a mod slot. And that's how you get those improvised pieces. So speaking of which, let's deep dive into them. Here are the gloves. So max crit chance, max crit damage with a max weapon damage core attribute. And then I have protection from elites for that mod. Going down to the knee pads, improvised knee pads with max weapon damage, max crit damage, and 9.1 headshot damage. Now, of course, I would want crit chance on there, but because I'm running the Lady Death, I'm already near max crit chance, so I don't really need it. That headshot damage does help the build. And then, of course, another protection from elites mod. And then, finally, the improvised holster. Uh, crit chance 5.1, but then max crit damage and max weapon damage with a protection from elites mod. And then finally, Sokolov Concern chess piece. Now the Sokolov Concern brand set bonus I get from this build, 10% SMG damage. Now this comes with max weapon damage, max crit damage, and 5.2 crit chance with, you guessed it, a protection from elites mod. Now, technically, I have 82% protection from elites. However, the max cap is 80. Now, looking at the skills, I'm using the scanner pulse just to see where my enemies are. And then I am using the riot foam. I have four ammo for that riot foam, so it's really fun to use. Um, that kind of seems to be like the skill to use for like speed running countdown. You foam the enemies in place, just face tank them and move on. Speaking of moving on, let's uh, move on to the stat sheet and then we will get out of here. So this is for the Lady Death. 98.5k weapon damage with 57 crit chance, 110 crit damage, and 79 headshot damage. Don't forget about the armor damage from the weapon. Going to the offensive tab, we're at 98% all weapon damage bonus with 40% SMG damage bonus. So every time I use the Lady Death, we are starting off with 138% damage bonus total. Now, gear talents, remember I am using Kill Confirmed from the Memento Backpack and Unbreakable on that chess piece. I have just, like, just at 1.1 million armor with 337k health. Now, remember I am at max protection from elites, so that's what's really helping me with those elites. However, remember that it is rare, but there will be a couple veteran, elite, uh, veteran enemies here and there in countdown. 
And uh, also, you want to note that if the hunters hack your skills, those are not considered protection, or it's not considered elite damage, so they're going to melt you. So just watch out for those hacked skills. And then finally, explosive resistance and hazard are both at 10%, and that is due to my watch level. So here is your disclaimer for my build video. So for this build, I am shade level 3,165. That means all of these attribute boxes are maxed out 50 of 50. If you are at or above shade level 1,000, you can copy and paste my build and get the exact same numbers and results because your attribute boxes will be maxed out 50 of 50 as well. However, if you are below shade level 1,000, some of these boxes will not be maxed out. Therefore, whenever you copy and paste my build, some of your numbers will be lower. It's okay. Don't freak out. It is still a very strong build. Just remember that your build can get better by hitting shade level 1,000. It is not a requirement. It's just a recommendation. And that is it, everyone. I hope uh, you are enjoying Title Update 15 and Season 9. I know a new apparel event is happening next week, so that's exciting as well. And uh, yeah, maybe you found this build helpful and this video informative. If so, don't forget to hit that like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. I am bringing you Division content every single day. But with all that said and done, I am Kamikaze Von Doom. I will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Peace.